to do like a question and answer session like at the end we can do okay. that too and i just want to let everybody know that i'm like recording this and i'll be sending it out to everybody um after this, okay so. cool Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen, but I'll introduce myself first. Um, my name is Betty Walkie. I am a um, Baltimore City Master Gardener, which is um, a volunteer organization. So this is not, I am not, even though I'm a master gardener, I am not a, you know, I'm not a horticulturalist. I have an interest in butterflies and pollinators, and that's how I became um, up. I see somebody. I gotcha. Okay. Um, I'll answer that question in a second. Um, or I'll get to that when we get to that. So thank you, Tammy, for that question. Um, so uh, as I'm co-chair of the pollinator committee, and our, our goal is to um, kind of help the community to understand the importance of pollinators and also gardening, like what we can do to um, help pollinators in our gardens, what plants to plant, um, kind of understand the life cycle of pollinators. And when I'm saying pollinators, it's, it's native bees, it's butterflies, or not really the big pollinators, really bees are and, and flies are, but um, so that's where I'm coming from. So I'm just gonna start and here we go. So I'm gonna share my screen. And we'll try this. Okay, hopefully that's nice and nice and big. And if it's not, just somebody scream out. Okay, so native plant seed saving and propagation. And again, my name is Betty Walkie. I'm a co-chair of the pollen committee of the um, Baltimore City Master Gardeners and which stands for the Pollinator Initiative Con Committee. Sounds really, really fancy. Here's a fact, only 60 to 80% of the seeds that germinate will produce sturdy, vigorous transplants. Now that's, that fact is kind of a generality about seeds in general. So whether it's vegetable seeds, flower seeds, not every seed is going to germinate and not every seed is going to, once it does germinate, it, it might not produce the best plants. So that's why we can't be too hard on ourselves if the plants don't, you know, do what we want them to do because, you know, nature has a plan and not everything can grow because otherwise everything would be taking over everything. Oh, okay. hey, Betty, sorry. Yes. Could you maybe um, put the presentation on like presenter mode? Cause it's kind of like a lot of um, screens. Um, Some just Ooh. mentioned in the chat, sorry. Okay, let me, let me stop the share. Let me see, I'm gonna try that again. It worked when we were practicing for some reason. I don't know why it's, um, Okay, like thank you for screens. stopping me on that. Okay, Sorry. no, it's okay. Let me share this. Is it still oh, doing? Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Right. Sorry, you. everyone. Okay. Um, so here is a seed, and this is a really simplistic uh, view of a seed. So inside the seed is the endosperm, which is the food supply for the seed. And each seed has a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny little baby, tiny plant embryo. And then there's the seed coating. And a lot of times, so if you have a bean, that outer coating, that's what protects and holds the whole seed together. And especially in native plants or native plant seeds, that's the thing that protects it but that's also the thing that has to go away or soften so that the seed will germinate. Okay, so what, what is germination? Well, germination and, and that little picture above just kind of shows, um, it's probably like a little bean plant or something. Um, just it, the germination is the development of a plant from a seed after a period of dormancy. So for instance, like right now, there's sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds, they, they need some time not to germinate. Otherwise, everything would be growing at the same time. So there needs to be a little period of sleepy time. And, what, and why do we need dormancy? 
to prevent a seed from germination before a favorable environment can support it. So here we are in Maryland, native plants grow in Maryland. They, they need and want cold weather, they need and want moist weather, they need and want winter. I mean, that's why they're here because they're part of our environment. So in order for the, the seed to grow, the environment, it has to have a little rest time before it can start growing. So germination is affected by four external factors. One, you need some water. Two, you need oxygen. Three, light. And four, heat. So for germination, you need, those are the things that you need. And germination begins with these internal factors. And this is where that seed and the quality of the seed is so important. You have to have a mature embryo and you have to have enough food supply in that seed to, to sustain the embryo. And then you have to have enough hormones to initiate the whole germination pro process. So you really have, and, and again, that's why not every single seed is viable. That's why every single seed is not going to grow into the most perfect plant. Okay, so the seeds of many Maryland native plants require that period of moist, cool conditions before they can germinate. So that's why, you know, we have snow here, we have rain in the winter, seeds need that. Okay, here's that crazy word. So people who are not familiar with this word stratification. And the way that I think of it is you need a refrigerator. So stratification is the process of kind of pre-treating the seeds to simulate the conditions that the seeds would normally experience in the soil over winter. And you actually put the seeds in your refrigerator, but there's a little process to it. One process, and it depends on the seed, and if you look at this picture, these seeds are huge, um, scarification. And you have to literally kind of weaken that seed coating to speed up germination. And in this case, if the seeds require it, you would use like a nail file or something, or just pre-moisten. And every species of native plant has like a different requirement. So stratification conditions. You need moisture so that that seed coat can be softened or you literally have to kind of scrape it up a little bit. Cool temperatures, Maryland, we're, you know, unfortunately I think we're getting a little warmer, but you do need cooler temperatures. And the last thing, as you're, pre kind of conditioning these seeds through stratification, it's not like overnight, it needs to be weeks, just like our winter, you know, we have December, January, February that are cold months. That's why when you stratify seeds in your refrigerator, and I will, I will talk more about that, um, it's not just overnight, you need to give them time and you need to, car it needs to correspond with the weather outside when we're actually going to plant the seeds. Okay, let's grow some Asclepias tuberosa. So this is butterfly weed. Now this is a picture of my butterfly weed with a sulfur butterfly who loves the nectar of the butterfly weed. Butterfly weed is a plant that is in the milkweed family. Here is a monarch butterfly caterpillar on the butterfly weed because monarchs only eat, monarch caterpillars only eat milkweed. So this is a great um, species of milkweed plant for monarch butterflies. And this over here is what my butterfly weed looks right looks like right now. So the seed pods are the kind of these, if you can see these orange, reddish orange things, those are the seed pods. This was a seed pod. It's it's opened up. This is actually a butterfly, or pardon me, a milkweed bug. 
and the, here's a, a, one of the seeds and all this fluff is um, part of the seeds because this is how this particular um, seed is dispersed. It's dispersed through the wind. So this will crack open. There'll be all these seeds inside and they're gonna blow away. So my neighbors are very happy that all my butterfly weed seeds are blowing onto their yard. Maybe not. Okay, so it's really easy to harvest these seeds. And again, the butterfly weed is a milkweed and it's the host plant for the caterpillars of the monarch butterfly. So this is what, um, this is what a seed pod looks like. It's a little green here. You wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily pick it now. Um, it's better to let it kind of get a little brown. Um, here it is kind of opened. Um, I think actually this, is this one up here. And you can see these nice big seeds and the fluff. And again, these things just go flying everywhere. The way to pull, you literally, I'm gonna call them feathers. I literally pulled the feathers out and you can see like the clusters of the little seeds. Um, and the seeds like literally will just shake off. The challenge with this is it's better to kind of grab them all but, but you know what, if you have some fluff, it's fine because in nature, when these seeds are flying around, nobody's coming along and pulling off the fluff. It just makes it a little easier. And I will say, if you don't pull off the fluff, it will fly all over you know, your house. So um, that's just a, a little housekeeping thing. But here are all the seeds that I could harvest. Okay. What do you do with these seeds? Here's one thing you can do. You can plant them right now, not right now, but you can plant them in the fall. Um, let nature, oops, sorry guys. Let nature do the, the stratification for you. Plant the seeds directly into the soil after there have been a few frosts. So you need to have, the ground needs to be not frozen solid, but you need to be in the season. Um, but this allows the seeds to remain dormant for the winter and come up in the early spring. So really you could start planting things now and they'll come up. For planting, actually most, I, I'm not gonna say, well, this is, these directions are actually for um, the butterfly weed. You would choose a, a sunny area and I will say native plants, you can plant them in containers, but you know, if you're gonna do this, Find a little space in your in your yard. Clear away, you know, any weeds. Um, make maybe you know a, an inch and a half hole for each milkweed. Space them about four to six inches apart. Put a seed in each hole and cover it and water it thoroughly. Make sure that your soil isn't like rock hard. Make sure that maybe something had been growing there before. Um, there is no need to fertilize these, but you know, you might want to add a little compost, make sure the soil, um, something's grown there before. You don't want to just kind of dig a hole in, um, you know, concrete soil. Okay. Here's, so that was outdoors. Outdoors is pretty easy. Just stick it in the ground. Now here's where that stratification thing comes in. If you want to grow it indoors, stratify the seeds in this fridge, and then you germinate the seeds under lights. This is the key, you have to have lights. And again, that cold stratification breaks the seeds natural dormancy and its germination cycle. So we're kind of like, okay, seeds don't grow. We're gonna pretend that you're outside we're gonna pretend that it's winter time. Um, for these kinds of seeds, you would, for the butterfly weed, I'm still talking about butterfly weed, you would soak them for maybe um, an, a day before stratifying. You'll place the seed in, in a damp paper towel. And I'm gonna show you all the steps. You put it in the fridge for three to six weeks, and then you take it out. Um, oh, you put it in, in February 1st, you let it be in there for a month, then you take it out and then you plant the seeds. 
So here's how to do that, how to cold stratify seeds. And this means overwintering in your refrigerator. Um, your first step is you soak some paper towels. Here's the seeds. You soak your seeds for 24 hours and there they are, they're pretty big. And that's just like a little cup. And you use a paper towel or a coffee filter to drain the water out. So then you have all these little seeds and they're not, they're not that little, they're kind of substantial. And then you're gonna wrap a dry paper towel around the damp paper, paper towel to kind of keep things moist, but not too wet. You don't want things to become moldy. Put it in a Ziploc bag, seal it up and label it. That's, that's like really important to label and maybe put the date when you did it. And then you're gonna put this in your refrigerator for a month. And then at the end of the month, and again, you do need lights. You need, need either a greenhouse or lights in order to do this. Um, so now you've taken it out of the refrigerator. It had, they've been stratified, it's time to plant. So you could plant them in trays or peat, um, small pots, but just make sure you have water drainage. You're gonna dampen the soil, put one or two seeds in each little cell. And that's a picture of my little, of, 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 uh, last year I stratified the teeniest, tiniest little seeds. And that's my finger holding a teeny tiny um, toothpick, putting each seed into a little, a little um, cell. Press it in gently, don't bury it, don't make it too big and I or too deep. And I covered um, the tray with, um, um, with a cover. Seeds need lots of light to germinate, um, either under a grow light or in a greenhouse. As I have tried my entire life to start seeds in the windowsill and they kind of sort of do, um, but you do risk um, your plants getting leggy, you risk the plants really not, you know, being as healthy as they should be. But try it. If you don't have lights, just try it, see what happens. Um, once these uh, butterfly weed seeds are in there, maybe 10 to 15 days, they'll start to sprout. Once they sprout, gently water. The best way to water is from the bottom up. So if they're in a the plastic tray, you know, you could water underneath. Um, you just want to be very gentle with um, the new seedlings. Don't overwater as it can cause fungus and take it from me. Like it seems like every time I try that windowsill trick, I get fungus. It gets, oh, it just gets like funky. Um, again, test the, the soil dampness, to, you know, to touch it, let it dry out before you water it again. again. Okay, oh, there's the water, okay. Once they've started kind of looking substantial, you can transplant them to larger pots or plant them outside if it's warm enough, but you have to make sure that the frost is over. Um, you don't wanna do it too soon. And you always want to, when you start tr transplanting, you wanna kind of harden them off to get them used to being outside. Okay, here's another great plant, the black-eyed Susan. Um, here's my, actually, this is my backyard right now. I have a bunch blooming. Um, I like to grow them because I love that the birds, um, I get goldfinches and other birds come and, and chew them. And you can see the top of these, oops. Oh. Uh oh, you can see the top of these, um, somebody's been, been chewing them. And then these are the seeds and I'll show you how to kind of harvest those seeds. Um, hmm, interesting, a fact, the black-eyed Susan is the host plant for the caterpillars of the silvery checker spot butterfly. So yet another reason, not only for the birds, but for the checker, or the checker spot, the silvery checker spot butterfly, which is not the, the state butterfly. And these are um, the seeds. And it's really easy just to kind of squeeze those seeds um, that whole seed head and yeah, there are the little seeds that come out. So they're, they're kind of little, but you, you can get them. Okay, just like with the butterfly weed, Black-Eyed Susan, plant them now. Let nature do the stratification for you. 
Um, basically the same instructions as the um, butterfly weed. Just plant them directly in the soil after there have been a couple of frosts. And again, this allows them to remain dormant for the winter and they'll, they'll come up in the early spring. Okay, or you could stratify in your spring or in your fridge, plant them in the spring, but again, you need those lights. Um, in this case, um, Black Eyed Susan needs a little longer, needs six to 12 weeks in your fridge. Um, so if you were to put them in the fridge January 1st, take them out March 1st to plant the, plant the seeds, and once planted, it'll take 21 days till, till you get sprouts. So each species of native plant, they, you know, they have their own little, their little schedule. So um, that's a whole other, and I, I do have a chart I can show you guys about that. But each plant does have different requirements. Okay, how do you cold stratify seeds in, you can, Again, you're overwintering in the refrigerator. Instead of using the paper towels, um, depending on the size of your seeds, you can use sand or peat and water. And there's that. So here's an example. Place a, a quarter cup of sand in a mixing bowl, add some water, make a little ball. And again, there's like a bunch of seeds in there. Add your seeds um, and mix thoroughly. That was out of order, sorry about that. Um, put it in a Ziploc bag and seal it. And again, label and date what's on it. Um, and in this case, um, leave it in the refrigerator for, for at least a month before planting. And I wanna show you if in your, as you're stratifying, if the seeds start to sprout in the bag in the fridge, take them out. Um, either plant them in the ground or in pots under lights until it's time to plant outside, so outdoors. So this, you know, this, this could happen. You know, nature wants to grow and maybe like it's not cold enough or something's, something's telling it like it wants to grow, but you can't, you can't um, have the seeds growing. They'll end up dying if they start to sprout. Okay, and I think somebody had a milk jug question. Um, Okay, winter sowing or the milk jug method. I am hot on this. Um, this is a great way to recycle. You're gonna use either clean or transparent or translucent milk jugs or water jugs or soda containers or food containers, like that's a rotisserie chicken container um, to actually um, sow these things outdoors. So, Here's how that works. This is just a gallon um, milk jug. You wanna add holes for drainage and air circulation for the top. Oh, sorry guys, go back, go back. Okay, um, so here's some holes that were popped in. I saw something about a, a good way to do that if you kind of heat up um, a Phillips head, a screwdriver and just kind of punch holes. So along the top and in the bottom, um, use a utility knife very carefully, slice around the milk jug five to six inches from the bottom, but don't cut all the way around, leave a little hinge. And that's what this little thing is. You're gonna add about four inches, five inches of just regular potting soil in the bottom of the jug. It does not, sorry, it does not have to be, um, it does not have to be seed starter. It can be just regular soil. You're gonna spread some seeds over the surface, kind of tamp, tamp, tamp them down a little bit, um, put a little bit of soil on top and water very gently. Then you're gonna flip the lid up over top. And again, make sure when you're cutting it that the handle, you can see it here, the handle is above and put your, it's better to put your little hinge right there. Um, flip it over and then duct tape to secure the top to the bottom and label it. Label it, label it, label with permanent marker. And I think I do want to go back one step. Um, I don't know why this photograph has the caps. You do not, you want to take the caps off. Okay, so I meant to say that, take the caps off. 
Okay, so now you've set this whole thing up, you've labeled it, you're just gonna put it outside. Um, don't start too soon, maybe, you know, winter solstice, New Year's, place it in a sunny protected spot outdoors. Try to, um, don't put it somewhere where it's gonna blow over, maybe put it on a table or a ledge. It looks like in this photograph, um, I, I, I'm pretty sure they're, sorry, go back. I think there are bricks kind of holding them upright. Uh, you just, you know, want to kind of protect them from um, animals or just, you don't want them knocked over. Okay. Uh, once the seeds sprout and it starts to get warm, something that you can do is just cut a new opening into the jugs to let more sunlight and air circulation reach the plants. And when they're tall enough to reach the top of the jug and seem to have a sturdy root system, then you can transfer transplant them, sorry, ah, transplant them to larger pots or into your garden if the soil is warm enough. Okay, so here's a little summary. Plant, you have three choices. You can plant the seeds in the fall, in the ground after a couple frosts. You can stratify those seeds in your fridge this winter. You can germinate the seeds under lights and transplant them to larger pots or in the ground in the spring. Or you can do that winter sowing in the milk jug this winter and then transfer to larger pots in the ground in the spring. And again, um, Black Eyed Susans take 60 days to stratify. That means 60 days in your refrigerator. Um, butterfly weed, 30 days, so a little less. Okay, and here's my little, my little ending. All the flowers of tomorrow are in the seeds of today. Um, that is a spiderwort, that is a blue mist, and that is um, a common milkweed with, um, which I all have, I guess they're all my photographs. Okay, with lots of, lots of beautiful pollinators. Okay, some resources. Um, University of Maryland, Extension, which the website is extension.umd.edu. Um, if you have any questions about gardening, you can just take a picture and send it to them um, and somebody will answer you, but it is just, a, 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 just an amazing amount of information. Um, I'm co-chair of the pollinator committee. If you have questions, you can send, uh, send an email to this address and Michael Andorsky or I will answer it. These are some great um, websites that I refer to, AmericanMeadows.com or WildSeedProject.net, also Wildflower.org and JoeGardner.com, who apparently I was not familiar with, but he's a PBS kind of guy and um, has lots of information. Um, I've used some of these when I've been looking at seeds and I can't figure out like, what is the seed? Is it, is this the seed? Is that the seed? And I will just Google, Google, um, you know, Joe Pie Weed seed. So I, I know which part is the actual seed. So that's also, if you just do a Google image, um, that could come up as well. So I'm gonna stop my share right now. Okay. Woohoo! Okay, look at all these questions. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of go through. Um, so we have a successful uh, winter jug seed. When I tried the paper towel, it gets moldy. That's the, I think, I gotta tell you, that was, that has been my challenge also, the moldy thing. And I think you just have to, um, Maybe do like maybe two paper towels, maybe do one that's less wet and one's drier. So I think that's the challenge. Um, okay, let's see. Do you keep them in the refrigerator? Oh, excellent question. So before you put the seeds in the refrigerator with the paper towel, do you keep them in the refrigerator, but without the damp? Okay, so I wanna show you 
how I'm keeping my seeds before putting them in the refrigerator. So this paper bag, I am harvesting. This is, let me get a, a paper here. So this is um, a Joe Pieweed flower head. This Joe Pieweed flower head has like one gazillion seeds. And I wanna show you the size, the size of these seeds. So here is the seed. It's so teeny, it has little, just a little bit of fluff. Um, this bag has a million. So I'm keeping it dry. That's important, keep it dry. So I'm just keeping it in a paper bag for now before it's time to put it in um, the refrigerator. I also let these kind of dry. This is not Zinnia. Here's a cone flower. I just put it in, in a bag, but make sure it's dry. Don't put, um, if it's, you only want to be picking, well, you want to be careful where you're picking your seeds from. Um, these are all from my backyard, but you want to make sure that they are, they're dry, that they're not green. There's not flower petals on them. If there are, do not seal them up because that will get that will get moldy. So you really want them to be dry. And I'm just keeping things either in paper bags or I'm marking um, little Ziploc bags before I put them in the refrigerator. Let's see what else I have. And this is so there's my butterfly weed um, seeds with all the fluff, and I did not go ahead and separate it. So when I open this bag, fluff is gonna fly out all over the place, but it's okay. Okay, is a sunny window okay? Again, that the, um, I have found when I grow not native plants, but when I grow things like zinnias, um, and even I might start some bean plants, for me, they get too leggy if I put them in the windowsill. So maybe other people have had um, better experiences or they have a better window than I have. Um, you really do need lights if you want to, because you want to regulate how close the lights are um, and you want to time it. Um, so that's my recommend, recommendation for that. Okay, so Tammy wrote, ah, the milk jug method is great because you don't have to worry about the squirrels digging in your newly planted seeds. I'm, I'm all down with the milk jug. Okay. Missouri zone six with this, will this information still apply to my area? Um, Elizabeth, I'm guessing it would. Somebody can correct me, but I think it would. Um, Here's my question. Here's a question, Anthony. If we plant directly in the soil after few frosts, do we water the planted seeds just once we put them in? I would, yes. I would just water them one time and then let nature do its thing. I think with all this, even the, the stratifying, we're trying to pretend we're nature. Um, so the more that we can let nature do its thing, the better. So I think the point of, of watering that first time is just to kind of set the seed and then let, let it do its thing. Um, ah, totally. This is a great suggestion. The clear plastic clamshell containers that grocery store um, store strawberries are sold in, would that work for outdoor stratific stratification? You just want to make sure um, I've seen it in the clamshells. I get, um, you just wanna have enough, able to put enough soil in it. The thing with native plants, they have long root systems and it's not like you're gonna grow these all summer long in these plastic containers, but just make sure that they're, that they're th um, deep enough to put enough soil in, because you do want them to, you know, get their, root, their roots going um, before you transplant them. Um, Anna, did I answer your question? Yeah, no, okay. Um, oh, okay, so somebody had a good, thank you. Um, Tammy had a, a, a good site, the seed, the seed site, um, which I guess, is it, 
UK? Is it a, a British site? Is a good site that shows a photo of the seed and a photo of the sprouted true leaf? Awesome. Um, okay, what else do I have, have to show and tell? Um, I don't know, does anybody have any other questions? I will say, oh, okay. I will say um, as a member of the uh, Master Gardener Project or, uh, Committee, we just did a, um, it was kind of a learning experience. And I'm gonna see if I can share that for a second. We did a, um, a project and it was a, a seed foraging um, stratification, but we had access to the uh, Silburn Arbor Arboretum greenhouse. So all the members foraged seeds, we all planted them um, in, our, in those uh, seed starter cells, but then we took them to a greenhouse which had control, it had light, it had constant watering. So we had like a great opportunity. However, we, based on that, we only had a 28% success rate. I mean, some seeds, nothing came up. Some seeds we had a million of. And was it because of the time? Was it because of the person, you know, didn't stratify long enough? Was it because it was uh, stuck in the corner of the greenhouse, who knows? But whenever you do any of this stuff, like it's a miracle nature works, but like you can't be hard on yourself if it doesn't come up. Um, let me see if I have any, the, I will tell you that the plants that we planted that came up that were successful was um, coneflower, which is a great one, uh, coreopsis, um, mountain mint, which I have to say a lot of these plants also like mountain mint, you don't have, you, you know, if you have some, you can divide things or if you have friends, maybe they'll divide them and share with them. Autumn is a great time to be planting um, native plants. So I, I'll just say that also. Um, what else? We had milkweed that came up. Of course, we had butterfly weed that came up, but we did have a low rate of success based on like the thousands of seeds that we planted. It was only like 21%. So not to be a downer, but um, we're experimenting. And, you know, as ma master gardeners, we're supposed to like be really smart, but like sometimes things don't always work. Um, what else? Any other questions? Do you want to know about butterflies? No, okay. Leaves, ah, thank you. Okay, the leaves. So as a master gardener, um, I'm all about leaving the leaves. Not only are leaves like, you know, gold for your garden because it will compost. If you're able to rake some leaves in a pile, in some corner of your yard. Not only is it good for, um, eventually it'll break down, but like nature lives in there, like a luna moth. It's cocoon might be in those leaves. A salamander might be hiding in those leaves. So be thoughtful about leaves that so you don't always want to um, rake up everything, put them in those plastic bags and ship them off. Um, you have to be, you know, it depends on what you're doing. What I do is um, I actually rake my leaves. I have, I have some compost piles. So I rake some leaves and put them in my piles. Um, I have like chicken wire circles, and put them in there. But I also just rake them into um, my flower beds and it's protecting the flower beds. It's, you know, it's kind of doing a little thermal thing but they're also breaking down for the fall. Okay, okay, here's, here's some things. Okay, if you're going to give away the plants that you grow, a good secondary pot to use after sprouting and it can grow in them a while, save your 32 ounce yogurt containers, awesome. Um, and you can give them away to folks just learning about, awesome. Okay, so that was a great idea. 
all these containers, I have to say, I am a part-time art teacher in an elementary school, kindergarten through eighth grade. I use like old honey, um, honey containers to squeeze out paint. And the kids are like, what is that? Is that Miss Betty? What are you doing? Like, you got to reuse this stuff. It's great. So thank you. Tammy had it, uh, thought about using the um, 32 ounce yogurt containers. They're also great for um, water when we're doing watercolor in art class. Okay. Anthony is all about collecting the leaves from his, um, go around my neighborhood and collect the bag leaves from my neighbors and, and put them in his own yard. Right. Because, you know, leaf grow, that stuff, that compost that we, some of us buy at Home Depot, that's what it is. It's leaves that have broken down and become compost that you want to mix in and amend your soil so it's nice and healthy. Um, ah, I have a patio with some big planters. What can I plant for butterflies? Well, I would certainly say the um, butterfly weed is a great plant to plant. Also, now, because it's a host plant for the monarch butterflies, I strongly suggest, where is it? Zinnias. Zinnias are great plants. They're pretty, they're long growing. You can regrow them. And the other plant that I love, and again, this is not a native plant. Zinnias are those annuals, but I have already harvested my seeds. I'm gonna plant them again next year. Um, Another great plant that I love is Mexican sunflower. Uh, uh, um, let me think what the technical name is. Um, Tithonia, T-I-T-H-O-N-I-A. Um, I have it growing out front, growing now because I planted it again, like in August and it's coming back. And I had a monarch like three weeks ago on it. So it is a great plant. It's orange flowers. Um, it grows really easily. And I had seeds and I just keep reusing the seeds. So all about picking up, um, picking up seeds. So zinnia is a great um, container plant. Butterfly weed is, let me think what else. You're not supposed to, but I do. I actually have common milkweed growing in containers. And I think the next um, Be More presentation, Michael Andorsky, who is also co-chair, is giving a presentation on container pollinator plants. So you might wanna check that out. Um, what else? I, I try to um, defy, you know, you're not, you're supposed to plant all these things in the ground. This year I actually planted, um, it's called cardinal flower, it's a lobelia and Hummingbirds love it. It's kind of a stalk and it has little, like very little, almost tubular red flowers. Every time I look, there's a hummingbird on it. And I had that growing in a pot. So um, nature wants to live. It might not come back. It might outgrow the size of the pot, but it might be good. Okay, let me think what else. Um, okay, leaves, recycling, milk jugs. What else? Any other questions? Morgan, any other questions? I feel like everybody had a lot of great input um, and that's really exciting to hear about the cardinal flower. I like just saw those in nature for the first time, like kind of recently and they're so beautiful. The, th the thing about them is they are just re-sprouting um, and I, if anyone's familiar with um, Doug Talame, who is like the godfather of bringing, you know, his book, Bringing Nature Home, um, I saw him speak, and I know it's probably in a, in a book, and he talked about cardinal flower, this plant that just reseeded it, itself all around his yard. And you do need kind of a moist um, uh, soil. And mine pops up where my sump pump um, throws out water. Like it's growing in between the concrete. So I love it. Um, oh, if you're going to a good, okay, we got that. Okay, how big of a pot? Okay, so I do not buy big pots because I'm cheap. So my pot, um, it's not, it, it's probably diameter 
maybe 24 inches in diameter. It is not that big. Okay, what's this? An inch, and, um, a foot and a half. It's not one of those mega pots. That's all I'll say. Um, and I do want to show you guys. So at my school, because you know uh, COVID, we have all these containers that I'm taking out of the trash can or out of our recycling. And this is what I'm going to be using for our my my milk jug uh, sewing this this winter. So I'm very excited because I don't I don't drink milk, but we have all these. So um, I know people had ideas. This stuff is everywhere that you can you don't have to buy anything special. Um, just check your trash can I don't know, or your recycling. Anything else? That's so awesome. Well, I feel like, you know, reusing and um, creating, you know, less things into the waste stream and redirecting that towards like regeneration is such a beautiful, um, positive thing. So thank you for that amazing yeah. presentation. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Thank you. Good. Yes, please be encouraged because I, you know, I'm again, I'm supposed to be this master gardener and we're all trying to figure it out and nature wants to live and we're just helping. We're just helping nature. So. So beautiful. Okay. Yay. Awesome. Thank okay. you everybody for coming tonight. And as okay. Betty was saying, there's, um, our next workshop is uh, pollinator gardens and containers. So kind of, you know, just flowing into the next subject here. And that'll be next Thursday, same time, seven to eight. And um, I will send out the sign up link for that. So thank you all for coming and thank you so much, Betty, for presenting. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Good luck. See ya.